ask you, to implore you, for the sake of our common humanity, to help us, stand with us, as we, as Christians, have stood with all the people of the world and help us. We want nothing more than to go back to our lives. We want nothing more than to go home. An emotional plea from Sister Diana as she testified on Capitol Hill and as some of the world's oldest Christian communities disappear. The statistics are stark. Every hour, 11 Christians are murdered in the Middle East. That calculates to 273 a day in a year's time. That number increases to close to 100,000. Meanwhile, an even greater number are being tortured and imprisoned, all because of their belief in Christ. This according to a Pew Research Center survey. The staggering numbers bring this question before us. Is the world paying enough attention to the plight of Christians, especially those Christians in the Middle East. Joining us now via FaceTime from Virginia, Chris Seipel, who is the president of the Institute for Global Engagement and also the founder of the Review of Faith and International Affairs. Chris, you were there for Sister Diana's testimony and then you got on a plane and went to Iraq. Thankfully, you're back. What did you see with your own eyes while you were there? Well, thanks for having me on the program, J.D., and thank you for your encouraging testimony and witness uh, to helping Sister Diana come to the United States at our invitation and at the invitation of the 21st Century Wilberforce uh, organization. Just hearing her words again just makes my heart break. Uh, we pray that, the, that our heart be broken by the things that break the heart of Jesus. And Sister Diana is the front lines, and it's our privilege to come alongside her. And during my trip there, it was just more of the same. Uh, the Christians are, have no place to go. They have no opportunities for work, and they have uh, no opportunity to return. And so they're in the status quo, and they are the forgotten minority, and they are unable to be salt and light as a suffering church serving all those who suffer. It's just a terrible, terrible situation. We know that uh, this persecution has uh, has created real problems of life and limb and of assembly. Uh, are churches being shut? Are they being destroyed? Where are Christians meeting to worship? Well, in the in the Nineveh plain, which is of course the uh, of the Old Testament fame, and Jonah uh, going to Nineveh is modern day Mosul, up in northwestern Iraq, and there are no Christians left there. They're all gone. They have all fled to northern Iraq, to Iraqi Kurdistan, and to Jordan. Uh, Kurdistan and Jordan are the places that have welcomed them the most, and we should be very grateful that they have. But they're not meeting on the Nineveh Plain because the church bells have gone silent. And so now they meet in abandoned homes, abandoned buildings. They're just trying to uh, survive as a community. They long to go home, but they will not go home unless they are protected by international forces to include the Americans. There's just no way they don't trust anybody anymore because they've been persecuted and nobody stood with them as Sister Diana stated. Chris, as I sit here and listen to what you're seeing, as uh, we see footage of Christians displaced, as we see their churches desecrated, right. where is the United Nations in all of this? Wasn't that the whole notion of creating the United Nations in post-World War II uh, in the situation to help people who are who are uh, being singled out, being persecuted? Absolutely, and they're, they're not there, but to be fair to the UN, and I'm a healthy critic of the UN, they are absolutely overwhelmed. This is the greatest humanitarian crisis since the end of World War II when the UN was created. And the number of refugees and internally displaced people in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Jordan, their populations have gone up by 50%. Jordan is, a, is, a, is a, a country of 10 million, and 5 million of them are refugees or internally displaced people. The same is true for 5, five million in Kurdistan and uh, Lebanon, 2.5 million refugees. Imagine if 150 million refugees came into America. They are completely and totally overwhelmed as a country. The UN is completely and totally overwhelmed. And we're in a situation, J.D., where 
doing humanitarian aid, relief and development isn't good enough because you just keep the status quo. We need a political solution. And at some point, we need a, a military element to that political solution that not just degrades ISIS, but defeats them because they are an evil and they need to be uh, removed. How that's done is another thing, but that is the only thing that's going to keep Christians in the Middle East at this point in time. Chris, 20 seconds. You saw Sister, uh, Sister Diana testify on Capitol Hill. Were you able to meet with her back in Iraq? How is she doing? Uh, she's doing well. You know, I went with her before she went on to testimony. We prayed together. Uh, the most important thing these days is how do you care for the caregivers? And she is one of the caregivers, and she's still in the U.S. She's taking a much-needed break. I did meet with her sisters in Erbil, themselves refugees, and they are hanging in there. Amen. But they need That's your prayers encouraging. and support. Yes, prayers, support, and more. Chris Seipel, we thank you for your time.